Welcome to the Digital Footprint, a podcast for leaders in healthcare, public health, and education who are looking to leverage technology to solve problems and make a big impact. In each episode, we interview innovators and entrepreneurs who are solving the most challenging problems facing these industries. Join us as we dig into the colossal tasks involved in bringing a new digital product to life. Welcome to the Digital Footprint. Hello, welcome to the Digital Footprint. I'm Richard Sims. This podcast is brought to you by Tyrannosaurus Tech, an award-winning technology partner dedicated to designing and developing high-impact software products. Today, I am joined by Marcus Blackwell, CEO and founder of Make Music Count. Excited to have you on the show, Marcus. Thanks so much, Richard. I appreciate the offer to come and join today. Yeah, it's good to see you. We, gosh, initially met several years ago. It's been a yes. while. We've, we've <laughs> kind of, you know, we've kept in touch on and off. I mean, it seems like a lifetime ago at this point, given how crazy the last few years have been. But I'm glad we've kept in touch. I've always thought that you know the work you were doing with Make Music Count was really cool. Like I, I love music. I certainly don't think I was a natural at math in school. So it resonates with me. And yeah. it's very much in line with like what we're interested in in this show as far as innovation and you know education. And um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to the conversation. And just to, to get started, for listeners who aren't familiar, do you mind just briefly introduce yourself? Tell us a little sure. bit more about Make Music Count. That would be a great start. Sure, sure. So I'm Marcus Blackwell and I founded Make Music Count. Make Music Count is a math curriculum and an app that's taught by learning how to play your favorite song on the piano. So we created this just creative way that gets students to positively engage in math and practice their math. And the catch is when you do your math correctly, you will learn how to play the piano even if you've never played before. So you're kind of getting like a, a two for one if you will, with within our app. We have some other aspects to make music count that I'm gonna share, but at our core, that's what we're all about. You know, making math fun, engaging in a uh, culturally responsive way so that everyone feels connected to math lessons. And mm -hmm. the, the vehicle that does that is music. I love it. Awesome, yeah, I mean, I know that for a lot of kids, math can seem very daunting and like a very dry subject. So I think a, a lot of kids kind of default to that, I'm just not good at math mindset, right? Adults so too. For you, <laughs> adults too, yes, 100%. <laughs> and I may, I may be guilty at times too. Um, so for you, you know, I know you were a math major in college. You know, like tell us more just about kind of your journey, like, growing up and, and going into, you know, education and whatnot, when did you discover that you really had a, a passion and kind of an aptitude for math? Well, that's what's interesting is that I didn't, I wasn't good at math at first. You know, that's kind of where my company came mm -hmm. from is the fact that I had this, I would say, taught intimidation and taught fear of, of math. And, you know, as a kid that's in elementary school or middle school, when an adult says something like, well, you know, math is hard, sometimes you just believe them. And, you know, you kind of mm -hmm. like bring that on to yourself. So um, for me, everything really started with the fact that I'm a pianist. You know, I've played the piano since I was five. Classical, like I used to do recital competitions, play jazz, gospel. I've played professionally since I was 16. So music was always my foundation. And then you know, I, I just got tired of this issue with math. And I was like, you know, I just don't understand why. Well, first of all, I wasn't getting the extra help that I was asking for. So that was kind of what pushed, mm -hmm. okay, we got to find a solution here. It was like, I was asking for help and I just didn't have the teachers that really kind of cared enough to, to give me the help I asked for. So it just kind of, you know, it's going to sound cliche, but it was like this light bulb moment, you know, where a friend of mine, asked me to teach them how to play something on the piano. And I was like, well, you don't know music theory, so I can't talk to you in those terms. But if you use this counting method, this will teach you how to play what you're asking. And all along, I've understood music with a math perspective. And it just kind of took me 
having to teach somebody else something musical to realize that I actually think I am good at math. And so it kind of provided mm-hmm. this newfound confidence. And so, you know, going to Morehouse, I was really fortunate to be surrounded by some amazing professors and friends that just allowed me to investigate how does math and music kind of connect. And that's how the math major kind of came mm-hmm. along was like, okay, well, I'm willing to, to do this, but I have to prove that I've conquered math intimidation myself first before I start trying to talk mm-hmm. about this. So that's that's where the math major came from. And like I said, had some phenomenal professors, did my uh, senior thesis on how math and music kind of connected. And that's what just kind of planted that seed for me is that, you know, this is something mm-hmm. that's cool to investigate you know that's really where it started i didn't you know go after this as like oh this is a business opportunity no it was just i i was tired of having issues with math and realized that piano and uh, music helped math feel better so that's how it worked for me and then naturally because i learned a lot about community service in college i just said look i wonder if some other kids would like this too so Mm -hmm. um you know, the, the, the part that connected all the dots to using the pop of the music was that I said, OK, a friend of mine said, hey, if you got something that makes kids better at math, we'll try it out. But if you're going to have middle school students do more math after a full day of school already, it's an uphill battle. Right. <laughs> so I said, right. OK, <laughs> I've got to make this fun and engaging somehow. So I said, look, I'll bring a song that they all know. You know, and we're here in Atlanta, mm-hmm. so I brought a popular two chain song for them to play at the time, and it was an automatic hit. You know, none of them had played the piano before, mm-hmm. so they loved the fact that they learned the piano on the spot. And then all of a sudden, math was no longer an issue, and I was like, "Hmm, that that was interesting." You know, and so every I would go to the school once a week, and so every week I would just bring a new song and bring a new song and try some different math so you know the two chain song was focusing on fractions but it's middle school as i said hey you know we should probably ramp up the math a little bit so i tried algebra and it it worked Mm -hmm. it worked you know it was engaging it was fun and so i uh did this kind of community service if you will for about six months before another school called and said we heard about what you're doing and we've got some high school students that don't know how to do some of the math that you're doing with those middle school students. Can you come and help us here? Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it's funny how, you know, an opportunity presents itself, you have to be ready for it, even if you're not right. So when they first contacted me, I thought they wanted me to do more community service. They're like, yeah, you know, our summer program meets Monday through Thursday from nine to 12. Can you do it? And I said, no, I have a job. And like, <laughs> I, I'm going to get fired if I just, you know, leave, you know, like that. You know, they're already yeah. allowing me to leave once a week. And that they were like, no, we'll pay you to do it. And I was like, wait, I said, just so that we're clear, you know, I made this up, right? <laughs> like, you know, I said, this is what I made up <laughs> at home. So, you know, just making sure that you guys understand. They're like, yeah, no, it's fine. It's enrichment. Mm -hmm. Then I learned that you could work with school districts. And so I was was an engineer at GE at the time. And that's when I took the leap of faith and left corporate America and started Make Music Count. That was back in 2013. And uh, that's how we got Um, started. That's awesome. Yeah. I didn't realize like how far it went back for you as far as you know, really looking to marry music and math as far back as college. And yeah, that that was a great origin story. I think that always when a founder is trying to address a problem they have experienced directly, I think that really helps, right? I mean, of course, just familiarity and passion behind what you're right. doing. So based on kind of what you're describing there, um, like when when did you see that you ultimately wanted to launch an app because i think naturally it sounds like it first started with very hands-on in person like when did the technology piece come into the picture uh well we hit a ceiling of school partnerships that i couldn't handle you know it was like a brick and mortar model right like we were an after school program i would buy Mm -hmm. piano keyboards and they would purchase my workbooks and i would hire college students to go 
to the schools where I couldn't go. So we got up to about 60 schools and I was like, I can't, like I was managing all the teachers in group me, you know, like it was, it was really like scrappy type of management. And I was like, there's gotta be an easier way to not only service the schools that we have, but how do we get to 6,000 schools, right? And that's where the idea for Mm -hmm. the app came. And I actually had a dream about it and it just essentially said, okay, you know, we, we have to solve two things. Number one, piano keyboards are expensive. So we have to put the piano in the app, right? <laughs> and so, mm-hmm. and then I, I didn't want to be limited to the after school space anymore. I wanted this to be used in math class during the day, in music class during the day. And so that just kind of let me know that making an app was the best way to scale our business. Very cool. So, um, I want to kind of circle back to that in a minute, but the other question I wanted to ask before moving on, you know, my familiarity with Make Music Count has always kind of been the app, right? But I understand that you've got workbooks, you've got kind of ongoing paid classes. How do those additional offerings fit in? Like, you know, are they things you've added on or, or did the app kind of come after those and how do you balance those things? Yeah, so we, we always started with the workbook. So those six months of community service I did, that's how I made my first workbook, was just a book of lessons. Mm-hmm. And so that's how we kind of got started. Like schools would buy that, you know. And so those books became the curriculum that is now inside of the app. But we still offer our workbooks because since it's math, you got to be able to show your work sometimes and, and work out problems. So... When we work with schools or any, you know, boys and girls clubs or YMCA's, you literally would just purchase an annual app license and purchase a workbook. And that's it. And then you're free Mm -hmm. to kind of, you know, the app is made for students to move at their own pace. Or you could do it as a class, but, you know, that isn't an issue. And, And then the cool thing is that now that it's an app, you can just use it at home. You know, it's it's live in the Mm -hmm. Apple Store and the Google Play Store for all devices. So whether you have a phone or an iPad, tablet, or we even work with, you know, a lot of schools have Chromebooks and Microsoft Mm -hmm. devices. So we have a web version too. So, you know, it works on, on anything. Awesome. Yeah, that's great. So I think that, you know, innovating in education comes with its own unique challenges. You know, you mentioned obviously kind of getting more into the school system, you know, I just want to kind of expand on what that's been like for you. You know, what's it been like, for lack of a better word, selling into that space, you know, where you're trying to get schools, teachers, parents, adopting it, making a pretty, you know, substantial change. How has that gone and uh, what have been some of the biggest challenges on that front? There's a number of challenges. So first, the educational space in general is more of a word of mouth type of environment. So that's Mm -hmm. kind of challenging. It's good. But, you know, how many teachers does one teacher know, right? So it's it kind of gets a little challenging. There's a lot of red tape when it comes to working with school districts. You know, we're up against your, your Pearsons and, you know, those large educational distributors. And so it's hard to be the, the little guy in that space. And oftentimes we're critiqued harder than the big guys, you know, <laughs> it's like Monopoly kind of, you know, so it's, it's really been challenging. Often, I would say over the past, you know, nine years, it's been about relationships. I think relationships are in any type of business, but it's really about relationships when it comes to the education system. So I've been fortunate to meet superintendents that, you know, really connect with my story, my personal story, and, you know, how you know, this first worked with me and that's how I relate with the kids. So I've been able to make sales that way. But it's it's really challenging. You know, the sales cycle with the school system is, is really not good either. You know, you may have to network mm-hmm. with the school district for a year before you get an order. And, you know, that's why we've made some drastic pivots moving forward, just because, you know, you can't scale a business only on relationships. You know, that, that's not how that works. So, you know, I'll be happy to talk about that too. But you know, it's it's been very challenging to work with, mm-hmm. with schools. And also, you know, on top of the traditional and normal barriers, 
I'm also introducing a brand new way of learning mathematics. Mm -hmm. So now we have another barrier, right? Like, you know, and there's lots of buzzwords that's been available, uh, you know, talked about. uh, And, you know, STEAM and the arts integration into STEM. But what I've seen is that it's just buzzwords. And a lot of people are not actually ready for actual examples of what STEAM means. I'm like, okay, Mm -hmm. great. You guys have gotten the STEM certification and you're talking about STEAM. Make music count fits. And, you know, it's like, oh, I don't know about that. And I'm like, well, didn't you just talk about the importance of the arts and the math? So it's like, what are we really talking about here? You know? And so it kind of gets frustrating, you know, to say, you know, I have what you're asking for, but there's still hesitation. And I know why it is. Mm -hmm. It's because of the music component. Usually when you think of musical stuff, Uh, It's like, that's the fun time. That's the, you know, the dance party. And oftentimes when you think about mathematics, that fun piece is not a part of the math learning experience. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, math is kind of like protected. Like that's part of the, what we're battling here is that the traditional ways of mathematics are cut and dry, black and white. You get it or you don't. If you, if you get math, great. If you don't, Mm -hmm. you maybe should try something else. And I'm like, no, that's not how math should be. Uh, taught at all and again you know as a math major I understand that math class needs to teach certain things but there should be creative ways to support what's taught that's that's what we're doing I'm not presenting something to eliminate Mm. the way that math is taught no that's needed and necessary but there should be fun ways to support that right and so you know I'll also say that one of the challenges we face is the fact that Make Music Count works almost too well, right? And what I mean by that is that if you're a teacher that is used to your class hating math, you don't get through much lessons each day, it's just, it doesn't work. And then here comes Marcus, you know, a guy you've never met before, and he gets your class to do mathematics that they haven't done all semester in 30 minutes you're going to be skeptical. You're going to be skeptical (laughs) and you might be hating a little bit, you know? (laughs) So it's, it's been that too. And you know, what I try to tell people is I'm not doing anything different other than meeting the students where they are. And that's with their music, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's, we use all genres, right? Hip hop, country, pop. We haven't been able to use gospel yet because that's a, a different thing, but it's important for students to feel a part of the curriculum that they're asked to learn. That's all that music is doing, right? And so, you know, there's certain styles of music that are looked negatively upon. And, you know, we're turning that on its head. It's like, well, this may not be your favorite song as a teacher, but look at the math performance it's it's providing you. Look at the scores going up. So. Mm-hmm. I think there's a compromise that we should talk about here. You know, obviously every song in our yeah. app is edited and clean and cut down. And so I'm like, what are we really talking about here? Right. And so, mm-hmm. you know, this is the battle that we're after. Right. This is what we signed up for is to challenge the way that math is taught and presented to students. Right. Like everyone, you know, mm-hmm. we oftentimes talk about like equality in the classroom. Equality in the classroom simply means that every student should be able to reach their full educational potential. And the way that we do that is just by using music. That's that's it. That's it. So it becomes challenging when we don't necessarily fit into the box of what is naturally sold to schools. So, yeah, it, right. it, there's some challenges. But again, like I knew that's what we signed up for when we started this, you know, and, you know, yeah. it's worth it because... I'm telling you, there's nothing better than seeing that light bulb moment in a kid that thought math was over for them, right? And I mean, I'm talking like Mm -hmm. high school kids, Mm -hmm. you know? At high school, you've made up in your mind, hey, this isn't my thing. I'm just going to stay over here. But for them to be able to feel Mm -hmm. that now math is something that they can do is priceless, you know? So, yeah. So those those are the challenges that we face uh, with Make Music Count. Yeah, no, I, I definitely um, empathize. Like in our work, which, you know, we have a, a much different perspective and exposure, but even just, you know, different school districts and systems that have like very specific 
you know, detailed requirements about oftentimes like really strange or dated or like not relevant security protocol and things that just navigating all of that alone and kind of their sales process and decision-making process is very difficult. And then of course, I think what you're saying, like fundamentally getting people to shift their paradigm on how math can be taught Mm -hmm. is a big one too. But what I like is, you know, I think it's an oversimplification, I'm sure, but if a lot of the goal of the app is to just kind of break down that barrier and get Mm -hmm. kids feeling like math is more approachable, you know, it's like anything that does it is great because I think that opens up the floodgates, hopefully. And I, I liken it a little bit to computer science, at least like when I was younger. I think now it's obviously such a hot field, and I think there's just more awareness of how valuable that skill set is and how in demand it is. But for me, when I was a kid, the very little bit of exposure I got to computer science, and even in college, was just very dry. You know, like it was not at first glance interesting or approachable. You know, it's like I wish they had just taught me some simple HTML and like I created a website rather than trying to learn (laughs) some of the initial theory because really you're just trying to get people to say, wow, this is something I actually can do and enjoy. So um, that all, yeah, all resonates with me. So one question I have to ask you, even though I think we're all sick of talking about it in a sense, with COVID over the last couple of years, what's that been like for you and your team? You know, more schools obviously yeah. going remote. I, I could see it both ways. Like, it's just a challenging landscape because so much has been turned on its head. At the same time, schools are investing more in virtual learning. Has it made it easier for you, harder? Is it both? Like, what's that been like for, for you? It's been both. Well, first, we almost had to close our doors because you know, for the guy that sells to schools, there was a world where schools closed and there was no, Mm -hmm. you know, no school and no one buying because we didn't know Mm -hmm. what school was going to look like. So it was a little scary for a moment. But then we, we did a couple of things. We started focusing more on the organic traction in the app store because even though school closed, there was a huge need for parents. Like, I need something to educate my kids at home. Mm-hmm. So we saw some some good traction there. And then once the schools started coming back virtually, all of a sudden, everybody wanted fun stuff to get the kids to just join mm-hmm. class on Zoom. And so that's how we started getting our foot back in the door. I was like, well, we're fun. And maybe we'll just, you know, advertise that way, you know. And then... Was mm-hmm. they saw the math component and, oh, this is algebra and, oh, this is graphing. And look at my kids do it. And that's when we started seeing almost almost the validity that we were looking for, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's a couple things. So that's the school piece. But there's a couple things that uh, we were able to realize during the pandemic. One, the pandemic wasn't just challenging for kids it was challenging for teachers and adults as well and Mm -hmm. so one of the things that we created over this past year that we're launching next month is an online tutoring platform where we'll say if you're a teacher or an adult that wants to make additional revenue tutoring math you can do so with make news account and you will Mm -hmm. just use our curriculum that we have in our app so we're different from like your out school or your coursera where on their platform, you have to create your own curriculum. We're saying, all you have to do is say, hey, I would like to tutor some kids in multiplication. And you know what I want to do it with? Bruno Mars songs. Mm -hmm. Perfect. That's in our curriculum. So all you have to do is just subscribe to our app, and then that would be your class posted on on our site. And parents would sign up, and you could make your additional revenue that way. So that was one big thing that really kind of came out of the pandemic. The other is we realized that our app is actually beneficial to the music industry, not just the educational area. And and what I mean is, you know, if you're a record label or, or anybody or a Netflix or Disney, you have content that you would like to market. And we realized Mm -hmm. that our app has created a brand new space an untapped space for quote-unquote marketing musical content 
and that's during the school day <laughs> and during learning time. Mm -hmm. And so we're now not just ed tech, but almost like an ad tech company as well, where you know we can go to labels and say, hey, wouldn't you like eight additional hours of the day to market your song in a creative way? And oh, by the way, your song is going to help kids get better at math? The answer is yes. You know, and so mm -hmm. this is really becoming a, a really exciting vision for us where we are viewing the educational system and children's hospitals and boys and girls clubs almost like a new distribution channel for mm -hmm. musical content. And so, you know, again, at our core, our app and mission don't change. Right? We're all about helping, but we also want to be a business that will make it. And especially when we when we mm -hmm. now see that there's a world where school can shut down, you know, it may be a good idea to go after the marketing and promotional dollars of the record labels. Yeah, that's super interesting. I hadn't really thought about that angle, but it makes a lot of sense. Okay, cool. That's a good kind of dovetail into my next question, which is you've got a lot going on, right? Like a lot of different moving pieces. There's the app itself, which I'm sure you're, you know, constantly thinking about making it the best it can be, but you're obviously doing sales, you're doing marketing, you're doing account management, you know, so as the founder and CEO, how do you view your role? How do you try to kind of prioritize all these moving pieces day by day? Yeah, so my role as CEO is more a visionary role, you know, being able to mm -hmm. connect the dots to, like I said, the music industry now. And you know, how are we going to be able to help teachers who aren't paid enough as teachers and provide them with this opportunity to make additional revenue? And, you know, so it's those two things. But also, you know, my job is more creating a community of people who uh, believe in creative ways of teaching kids, you know. So in the trenches of like creating the equations and creating the curriculum, that's not really my job anymore because that's solid, right? The the app works, but now it's about how do we start introducing a real conversation about the importance of innovative learning, right? So I've created a really cool way to connect math and music. Well, I hope that this will start a conversation for how should we connect history and jazz or, you know, mm -hmm. science and dance or, you know, like, I just think that there's there's a larger mm -hmm. conversation that Make Music Count is representing, and it's about you know time for us to think outside the box for how we can reach kids so that, again, so that everyone can have that ability to be whatever they want to be, right? Don't We still want that for our kids, right? And, you know, we've got a different type of child in the classroom now that, you know, kind of challenges the teacher, like, hey, convince me. To, to be here, convince me, you know, because I've got mm -hmm. a supercomputer in my pocket where I can find all the stuff you're talking about, but, you know, help me find my passions so that I can mm -hmm. be my best self. So, you know, again, my my role is, is now kind of like which direction Make Music Count will go. You know, I would love for us to own the space of creative learning. You know, and I think that this teaching tutoring platform will, will do that. But um, yeah, those are the things that I really focus on. I still make lessons, but, you know, um, I'm hiring now to, you know, bring people like that on board that can, you know, develop the curriculum and, you know, manage, mm -hmm. you know, the partnerships with schools and stuff, you know, because there's a really important conversation here that's much bigger than simply our math and music curriculum. Yeah. No, that's, that's great to get a sense of kind of the bigger picture vision. And I think that, you know, I, I do think that so much of learning is that kind of learning how to learn perspective, mm -hmm. you know, that you're not necessarily going to remember every detail you learn in history class or science, but if you, you know, get excited about a, a field and you feel empowered to kind of self-direct, you know, it's like in my day to day, and I'm sure similar for you, it's like there are tons of things I'm getting into every day that I don't know how to do or I've never done it before, but you kind of learn to be resourceful and trust yourself. So, yeah, I think that's a big part of it. And I definitely like 
the vision for how it can to expand into other into other subjects. So, so let me ask you something. I always ask guests, and you've spoken to this to a degree. You know, when it comes to the challenges of kind of innovating within the education space, obviously COVID, but any other big challenges that Make Music Count has faced over the years that really stick out and how have you managed to overcome those? You know, a big goal of this show is for people listening who are either in the early stages of a new venture or thinking about launching something is like, let's be really real about it's hard, it's rewarding. So I love to just hear some of the like really difficult things that really come with the territory. So specifically to make music count, our elephant in the room is music licensing. You know, in in a traditional mm-hmm. sense, apps and platforms like mine should pay licensing fees to the music people to use their content. I'm saying, no, you should pay me to access the space that I've created that markets your content. So we've been mm-hmm. having some really interesting conversations because they're like, who is this guy I think he, <laughs> you know, think he is to be able to tell us this? And I'm like, I'm the guy that is connecting your musical content to good stuff. And, you know, not just good stuff, but a new mm-hmm. space that, that you cannot reach. There's no teacher that says, okay, class, mm-hmm. open up your Spotify and turn to, no, there's no one that does that. You know, so, you know, I'm not, this isn't far-fetched. It's actually pretty clear that you guys should work mm-hmm. with us. So, you know, it's just, and so the point I was making is that you can't let the fear of, oh, I'm going to get in trouble if I build this, stop you from building it, right? You have, sometimes mm-hmm. you have to build the solution so that people can actually see. Like, if I was just talking about this, people would be like, you shouldn't even start going down this path at all because they're going to shut you down. Mm-hmm. They're going to this, they're going to that. Well, you know what? No, they're not because there isn't an artist on earth that's going to say, hey, stop using my song to help kids get better at math. There, there isn't one. It would be a, a, a social mm-hmm. media nightmare if I said that somebody (laughs) said that to me right so I would just say you know you can't you can't psych yourself out you know you you have to be willing to see it through you know like this is this is year nine for us and honestly at year nine I feel like I finally know who we are and how we're going to make it you know and that's with Mm -hmm. all the challenges of the school districts you know and that's why you got to you have to be able to go back to your passion for why why you even started this in the first place. You know, there is no better feeling for me than seeing kids, the light bulb come on, and 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 the joy from a kid that was struggling in a set like there's there's nothing that beats that. So even if we help one kid tomorrow, we, I'll still do this, right? Mm-hmm. But yeah, you just you know it it is it is challenging you know i you know i have a wife and a baby and another on the way so it's like you know you have to build a business that makes revenue and there are times where there is no revenue coming in many many times right mm-hmm. and and then you know it's we're in the venture capital game right so we have to talk to people about raising funding and you know there's lots of challenges there with being a solo founder and you know having this large amazing vision but your revenue doesn't always match the trajectory of what you're talking about Mm so you know it's there's a lot of challenges it it is definitely an uphill battle but it is rewarding you know Mm -hmm. it's rewarding just at our foundation like i said you know i get kids to love math that hated math that is amazing i'm teaching people how to play the piano that never thought they could play the piano like that that feels amazing you know, mm-hmm. and there are big wins too, revenue wise, right? When we get, you know, a, a district that buys us for their entire district, right? You know, we actually did our first mm-hmm. marketing partnership with Cartoon Network. That was huge for us, you know, being mm-hmm. able to tell them, like, I sold them on this idea. I said, look, you guys make content for kids, but you don't talk about education enough. And they were like, you're right. And I said, look, I can help you do that, and it will benefit you because it's marketing that you don't have right now and they're like let's Mm -hmm. do it and i said i said this works this can work with every single platform that's out there every single tv show every single song you know and you know i don't want to come off as oh he's trying to just do marketing and not help the kids anymore no we are doing that 
that's we have the checkbox there right <laughs> you know mm-hmm. but now we have to you know create a business that's going to scale and and thrive and i believe that it's bringing more benefit if we bring the benefit to the music industry and use the school system as distribution that's how we're going to be able to do it okay awesome yeah that's great and i love hearing about some of the wins too and i'm sure there's a lot of those for you all and like you said i'm sure just seeing it in action and seeing a kid really respond is is the biggest thing that that kind of keeps you going so specifically as it relates to launching a software product like what's what's kind of the the main advice you would give someone about to go down that path i mean there's obviously so many challenges associated with doing a startup but specifically it's like you know yeah. trying to build an app is not easy and there's a lot of things to figure out and it's not bugs cheap to either. navigate you know what <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> um i would I say <laughs> First of all, an app is never done, okay? So you have to launch. You got to get it out there so people can even tell you Mm -hmm. that this is something that you should keep doing. Before you spend tens, hundreds of thousands on building this. So, you know, Mm -hmm. getting an MVP done just so that you can show people, you know, because, again, being able to take something from an idea phase to something that I can now see and touch is very, very different and very important. And... You know, and it's funny, like thinking about like the previous versions of my app and where we are now, I was like, I can't believe anybody bought this thing, you know, (laughs) but it was important for people to see. And it was good enough to be in front of some kids that Mm -hmm. liked it. And so I would just say, you know, bare bones, just, you know, because it's very expensive to buy these, to build these apps. So, you know, get your idea in something that's tangible so that you can start talking about it so that you can show people what you what you have and and then you can kind of build from there. Yeah, I think that's that's great advice no matter what industry you're breaking into, you know, it's always a struggle I think to really embrace that MVP mentality, but it's yes. it's very important. Um, yes. So bigger picture question I have for you looking at the education space what kind of big trends do you see? I think everything is changing there so much. And obviously COVID has amplified that. Like what other big trends do you see that you think are, you know, interesting or going to be really impactful? A couple of things. First, social emotional learning, right? So we now have kids who have spent maybe two years outside of the school classroom. They don't know how mm-hmm. to interact with each other anymore. So, you know, being able to be kind, you know, to someone in the classroom or, you know, interacting with someone is, is big and social and emotional learning is going to be, it is the new buzzword for all school districts, you know. Mm. Um, so I would say that's the big one for the school districts. Now, something else that's been blowing up has been these online tutoring platforms. Out school mm-hmm. blew up during the pandemic. Coursera blew up. There's all these, you know, people are realizing that there's a need for learning outside of the school day. And, you know, it's interesting Mm -hmm. because teachers have been doing this for years where, you know, they'll tutor students in Asia on how to speak English or things like that. But, you know, there's definitely a large push towards these digital platforms. So that's, that's pretty cool. And then, of course, you know, as I mentioned before, the importance of STEAM, the arts integrated into the STEM fields, that's still, it's being embraced more. just because of the Mm -hmm. need to uh, really engage students in the classroom. Yeah, um, that's super interesting. Okay, so it looks like we're about out of time. I really appreciate you coming on the show, Marcus. This has been really great. No problem. Uh, Before we sign off, where can listeners go to connect with you, learn more about Make Music Count? What What can folks do to support your mission? Oh, yeah, thank you. So you can go to my website, makemusiccount.com. Our app is free to download and try out in the App Store. So just search Make Music Count on your phone, whether it's Android or iOS, iPads. You'll you'll really, you'll love it uh, as soon as you see it. You can also find me on social media. So on Twitter, we are at underscore Make Music Count. Same thing for Instagram, at underscore Make Music Count. 
Um, we have a YouTube channel where you can see some examples of me talking through lessons. So if you just search mm -hmm. Make Music Count, we'll, we'll pop up. And then if you're a, a adult or a teacher or a college student that would be interested in being one of our virtual tutors, shoot me an email. Just shoot me an email, which is uh, Marcus, M-A-R-C-U-S, at MakeMusicCount.com. And uh, it's, it's very easy. You do not have to be a pianist. You don't have to be a mathematician. You just have to be an engaging you know, tutor that kids would want to, you know, be on Zoom with for, for 30 minutes, right? So we'll teach you how to do everything. And again, you can make it personal, right? You can bring your favorite song right, that you'd like to, you know, teach kids. So, but yeah, that's, that's how you can, can reach me on those various platforms. Awesome. Well, thanks again, Marcus. It's been great having you on the Digital Footprint. And yeah, excited to keep following what you're doing with Make Music Count. Thanks so much, Richard. I, I appreciate it. And I appreciate your support for the years. So thank you. Thank you for listening to The Digital Footprint. This show is brought to you by Tyrannosaurus Tech, an award-winning technology partner dedicated to designing and developing high-impact software products. If you like what you heard in this episode, make sure to subscribe to the podcast on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. For show notes and access to all episodes, please visit tyrannosaurustech.com slash blog. Digital footprint.